I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Joshua Topkin, CEO and co-founder of Supra Oracles. Joshua, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time to come on. Great to be here, Ashton. Likewise, I am really excited to dive into this. A lot of people don't know a lot about Oracles and there's you guys are doing so much in the space that I think more people need to become familiar with as they sort of learn the intricacies of the cryptocurrency space. Let's just kick off our conversation by hearing a little bit about Super Oracles from you, and then we'll sort of dive into those details. Sure. Yeah, so uh, Super Oracles is a next generation Oracle. Um, we have heard of, uh, you know, blockchains and smart contracts, but many people don't realize that the capacity and capabilities of smart contracts are kind of limited to the, uh, you know, on-chain data. But when you can bring external data from the real world in, mm -hmm. then the you know what you can do with these blockchain blockchain smart contracts are much much more uh, the, the the excuse me the <laughs> stumbling over my words here, but uh, the utility is much greater, right? And mm -hmm. we can do so many more. So this is a very common theme that um, <clears throat> developers kind of come in from the Web two world. They they start thinking, okay, I got this really great idea. They jump into Web uh, Web three blockchain development. And then they realize halfway through, oh, wait, actually, I can't build that without getting external data from the real world into a blockchain. So yeah. we have a me mechanism and a strategy and a technology that brings cryptographic guarantees to any data that we let enter a blockchain. And uh, we do this at scale. So we have, uh, you know, a, a lot of throughput. And uh, fundamentally, also, we're kind of positioned as a middleware network in the middle of multiple blockchains, servicing this external data to multiple ecosystems. Very cool, Joshua. Thanks for that intro. And yeah, I'd love to dive into that a little bit more just for the people that are watching that, you know, they, they hold Bitcoin and Ethereum. They're trying to get interested in DeFi. They sort of don't understand the back end too much. Um, you know, oracles, you often hear like, you know, without oracles like Chainlink or like these other oracles, you know, DeFi wouldn't exist. But like, what does that really mean? You know, why does it not exist? Why is super oracles necessary uh, for DeFi or for these price feeds? Maybe you could just explain that a little bit more. Yeah, so, you know, once again, a lot of these, uh, uh, like, use cases for smart contract platforms, they're limited in scope because they, can have, they have to act off of some information. So if this information is purely just data that's on-chain or historical information, then the, like, the, the kind of range of what can be done is limited. So, uh, you know, there's many kind of use cases and products that can be created, uh, including synthetics products. So this means it might be like, you know, different other tokens from other ecosystems on chain. It could be uh, digital assets represented on chain. It could be um, insurance products. It could be a wide variety of different, um, you know, services, uh, in, 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 including uh, like getting analytic and performance data mm -hmm. on and like non-fungible tokens, NFTs. So uh, there's there's actually a lot of things that can be done um, with oracles that you otherwise just really simply cannot do uh, with mm -hmm. blockchains without oracles. Definitely, and you know, there as DeFi sort of exploded throughout 2020 and 2021, there's this increasing need for oracles for price data feeds and, and getting the pricing information to uh, the exchange because, as you know those prices aren't encoded on the blockchain. It's sort of like the external demand of, of the exchanges and where the prices are coming from. And the smart contract can't have that programmed into it when it was written because the prices are always changing, um, right? But there, there are other uh, functions besides DeFi as well that have really tangible use in the real world. You know, I hear about these farmers, insurance, crops, auto paying out, um, determining payouts in a smart contract, depending on the weather or some other kind of external information. Where do you see Oracle's at right now? You know, it seems like we need prices for DeFi. We need prices for these digital assets on the exchanges. Is that really the main use case for super Oracle's or these Oracle's, or are you actually working into other industries and other approaches for Oracle's as well? Right. So we are working into multiple different industries and approaches. Um, actually, I do have a background in IoT myself, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we built uh, some early prototypes for a publicly traded company in Taiwan called Aventech. We also did prototypes and, and uh, entered a kind of food safety challenge by Walmart China, 
and we're we're one of the teams that were like chosen as to present our solution, Farm to Table. Uh, that was that was a solution that included IoT as well as blockchains. Now, there are um, many use cases, of course, but DeFi is like the kind of low hanging fruit. It's mm -hmm. the most obvious, and also it's just clear product market fit in the in terms of where blockchains can um, can kind of play a solution. Peer to peer lending, peer to peer kind of like banking, so to speak, and services, financial services, is uh, is in that realm. Um, mm -hmm. The you know. Whether it is you know DeFi or if it's uh, you know related to IoT or you know um, uh, supply chains, the truth of the matter is the quality of the data and the security of the data really really matters. It, it's just the whole entire game. The data integrity is the whole entire game. That, you know, so uh, what we're doing that's different than the others are um, we're we just apply additional rigor more than our competition. So much so that we, especially when it comes to cryptocurrency pricing. Um, our methodology has a security guarantee of a hundred times more uh, data correctness guarantees than the incumbents. Now, I say that because of some uh, solutions have uh, a small cluster of nodes, right? And those nodes are not changing. And when I'm saying that's pretty much one of the major issues, um, when those nodes are not changing or rotating, those nodes, given enough time and given enough incentive, they will collude. We've seen this in the physical, like real world as well, with the kind of li LIBOR scandal in the 2008 instance. This is where like trusted institutions, major like banks and central banks were actually colluding on the insurance rates or the interest rates rather. And this was having kind of global ramifications across the financial markets. If it can happen in that setting, it's definitely happening across like anonymous node operators. Mm. Now, what we do in our model is we're bringing blockchain level security guarantees. We're bringing uh, blockchain principles, um, applying it to the Oracle layer. And we leverage more nodes and we have more random selection and random rotation. This is uh, part of our security mechanism. And uh, we also uh, are a proof of stake network. So the nodes have to bond our token. So we do have a cryptographically secure network. We also layer that with economic security through uh, the staking. So yeah, this is kind of what brings us to our differentiating factor. It's basically the inability to cheat. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And yeah, that's a great point you make there, Joshua, because it seems odd that in you know, the decentralized finance world, uh, you're trying to get price feeds for a decentralized exchange and the whole thing's supposed to be decentralized for the most part, uh, but the oracles rely on price feeds and those price feeds have to come from somewhere in the real world. How do you ensure that that information that you're getting is not changed or manipulated by some kind of centralized entity? Absolutely. And even a little bit less like aggressive than that is small things like reading the data first, trading against the data before you publish it. Uh, so front running it or, um, you know, delaying the publishing of it if you notice that it's not beneficial to your position or that kind of situation. Mm -hmm. um, if you do that, that's not as obvious as actually changing the value. Now, um, it's also hard to prove whether or not some of these solutions are adjusting the, the reported values by a couple of basis points to their favor, mm -hmm. you know. So really what you want to do, once again, is you want to make it virtually impossible for this type of behavior to occur in the first place. And you also want to kind of uh, organize the economics such that there, you create a racing condition to get the first node to publish the correct information. Uh, it's the, uh, the reward. So that's kind of those, these are the types of things that we're, we're thinking about. Definitely. Good point. And with Super Oracles, how deep are you guys into the DeFi space or in business right now? Sort of where's the platform at with the oracles? Mm -hmm. So we are still in this kind of early stages. So we have a proof of concept that's effectively a private test net, right? Um, we have select partners that we're working with and we're introducing our solution to. Uh, we are moving uh, from this alpha test net, so to speak, into our test net phase in the next few months. And then we're going to go through a series of rigorous audits that period is going to be, you know, it could be three or more months, right? We're going to invite multiple ecosystem, multiple auto firms from a variety of ecosystems to uh, kind of make sure that our model is is actually secure. And furthermore, we're going to create a like a large bounty program where we will actually invite, um, you know, anyone to attack our system and kind of really fortify it before we remain it. We take security 
uh, very seriously, right? This is mm -hmm. this whole system. Um, you know, this isn't the real world where if like bad data enters, you know, some system, you can just roll it back. These have like cascading consequences because smart contracts themselves compose with each other. They interact with each other. Mm -hmm. So really the, the level of security and the data correctness guarantees need to be as strong as the blockchains that are underlying, you know, these, these ecosystems in the first place. So that's kind of what we're doing. And uh, that's our focus. That's why, well, we want to move fast and we are moving fast. We're moving fast without breaking things. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of our, our attitude. Yeah. Cool. And I was looking at, at you know, through Super Oracles, and um, from what I understand, and I don't know if people that are just getting into DeFi fully understand, is that it's not, it do doesn't seem like the end user actually, you know, is clicking a button like, you know, check Oracle for price, you know, it's all really in the back end. Um, so who ideally are you partnering with to sort of make use of the Oracle so that the, the front end users get to use it through through their software you know what are those partners that you're partnering with already or ideally are you looking at partnering with going forward oh yeah so we actually have 400 partners uh partnerships already in the works so wow. we've done a lot of uh you know early discussions with a lot of projects a lot of them are DeFi, a lot of them are GameFi, and some of them are you know most of them do kind of have a financial component to it um, some of them might be sports sports related right some of them some of them might be prediction markets um, but a lot of them are DeFi and a lot of them recently are GameFi. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the, the, the way that it works is these protocols themselves actually will be calling our data periodically. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that we're building into Super Oracles an automation service. So this will take some time to roll out. But what this means is it's kind of a decentralized if this, then that scenario. So mm -hmm. if price drops a certain, certain um, threshold, trigger this type of behavior, or, and remember, we're positioning ourselves as a cross-chain oracle. So we're in the middle of multiple ecosystems. So if some behavior happens in one ecosystem, have some sort of reaction on another or triggers the transaction, this is the type of scenario that we're you know, bringing to market that doesn't exactly um, exist yet in the oracle space, like an all-in-one kind of solution to facilitate cross-chain DeFi. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And with 2021, you know, DeFi just continued to explode. Uh, and the more DeFi explodes, the more they need oracles for the prices as well. Um, where do you see, you know, Supra fitting into DeFi you know, by the end of 2022 and even two years beyond that? Um, I'm sure DeFi trend will continue. Do you see that as one of the main focal points of just bringing those price feeds in or are there other goals as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, um, I do want to mention these things called constant function market makers or automatic market makers, AMMs, mm -hmm. like the Uniswaps yep. of the world. Uh, they're a really interesting uh, innovation for the space, and uh, they're very much responsible for a lar large uh, amount of this uh, kind of uh, this boom. Now, um, some of those, some, some, uh, most of those actually, like Uniswaps, don't use a traditional Oracle like ours or, or any others. Now, what we're interested, however, to bring to the market are the, like the next generation of these AMMs that do use Oracle data. This actually can uh, mitigate what's called the permanent loss where there's some value loss in these trades because um, because the illiquidity and such like this, as well as slippage where there's, um, you know, when you do these trades or you might not be getting the best deal uh, because of the the way that these, these, uh, these, uh, these products are priced. We think that there's going to be some new innovation in that area using Oracle data. And we think that uh, it's going to be very exciting because, um, you know, ultimately we can, we can uh, basically get better accuracy, you know, mm -hmm. you know, so while I do have a, a tremendous amount of respect for uh, that innovation, I think that that space in and of itself will evolve and uh, using Oracles in unique ways will like prove to do some very interesting things. Mm hmm. Very cool, Joshua. I didn't know that actually about Uniswap. I know <clears throat> the AMM is revolutionary, uh, but mm -hmm. there's definitely iterations and reiterations as we continue to grow and, and the user experience and everything is only going to get better as it gets more mainstream adoption. So I'm looking forward to hearing about that. Uh, and you did mention earlier, you touched on a couple things like the upcoming you know, mainnet launch and some of the goals that your team is working on. Maybe you could talk about you know in the first half of 
2022, what are the main things that you're looking to achieve and get out from Super Oracles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to get to market as quickly as possible, you know, of course, in a sustainable and, and secure manner. We have a couple of initiatives in, in, you know, in the works that includes both, of course, a core Oracle service, as well as an automation network, as well as a, you know, a verifiable random function, VRF. Uh, this is a, a very important service. And actually, I have a pretty deep history in VRFs uh, myself um, uh, that I can get into maybe some other time. But, um, you know, uh, what this can do is, you know, there's there's things like generative art and, and non-fungible tokens like mm -hmm. uh, that use randomness in order to to like do a fair election. Um, we we have a very unique m approach to this. Basically, we do use cryptographic primitives and signature schemes, threshold signature schemes, as well as um, we leverage uh, the butterfly effect and the, uh, the idea that, you know, a butterfly flapping its wing in Mexico can cause a tornado in Texas, mm -hmm. that small things in, in, in uh, the course of, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, kind of at global scale can have massive, massive, uh, uh, like differences. Mm -hmm. And what we'll do is we, we bring this, like the idea of like chaos theory, like mm -hmm. chaotic systems, like weather data and, you know, prices of Bitcoin, no one I've heard knows really what the current price is going to be. Mm -hmm. We take this inf information as added entropy into our randomness. So, uh, very unique things can be done. I mean, you know, for example, we had that, uh, you know, uh, that it was, it was, I think it was like Tonga uh, volcano. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, yeah. imagine like if you had, were able to like track back your generative art to that, like, like mm -hmm. that natural, you know, event, you know, it'd be very mm -hmm. interesting kind of new ideas that we've been heard, hearing about recently. Um, these types of things, you know, uh, do require oracles and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, as far as our timeline, uh, we are moving from our alpha testnet to testnet uh, fairly soon, maybe in a couple of months. And then we'll be opening up, and we're actually starting to communicate to node operators already, and we'll be opening up our doors to kind of a variety of different ecosystems. The wonderful thing about um, the blockchain ecosystem right now is that node operators are very open to run nodes all across multiple uh, projects. Mm -hmm. So it's been... Um, quite welcoming uh, you know uh, to and, and they've been quite open to to work with us uh we're going to slowly but surely decentralize this uh, this is the, during the testnet period it will take three to six months or whatever it might be plus the audits but uh we we intend to get to market as quickly as possible so mm -hmm. if we're lucky we're talking about maybe the summertime mm -hmm. very cool joshua and for you know more partnerships uh, more ecosystems and just end users that are interested as well in learning more about Super Oracles and, and following along as you head towards the mainnet launch. What's the best way for them to stay involved and to learn more? Yeah, so definitely, you know, connect with us at Super Oracles on Twitter. Um, also on Instagram, uh, uh, excuse me, I meant Telegram. We don't use Instagram uh, for this, but uh, more recently we are making a big push towards our Discord. Yep. So uh, we actually have some interesting initiatives going on there. We have some incredible announcements. Um, we're going to be kind of building up our community there. Uh, we're, we have an ambassador program going on. And um, yeah, so I would say, you know, look us up on Twitter, look us up on, you know, Telegram, not Instagram, Telegram, and then also <laughs> Discord. Yeah. Awesome. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Joshua. I will leave all those social links as well in the description box below for the viewers. I appreciate you taking the time to come on. All the best with the current trajectory towards the uh, the testnet and the mainnet, and let's follow up in the near future. Yeah, Ashton, great. Uh, thanks for having us, and uh, you know, feel free to invite us anytime.